about the Mar Music Festival that happened in Leeds. Hi Lucy, how are you? I'm good thanks Nance, how are you? I'm um, fine. Can you tell me um, when did the Mar Music Festival start? The first one we did was in 2005 and we've just done the fourth one a couple of weeks ago. So. Best of the year yet? I felt like the atmosphere and the set, the setting and the way we arranged the tents and everything was just you know, it was really nice. I think it just helped create a really nice atmosphere and the people were lovely. Um, which part of the festival do you enjoy, like, every year? I really like the actual setup before anybody gets there. <laughs> when everybody's working together yeah. and kind of creating it, I think that's, that's one of the most exciting times for me because we're all out in the open, camping, you know, just making something happen and making it, putting it together and then you kind of see it all finished. Uh, this year I loved the green room, the, the media tent, because um, the chill out space is always something that I really, um, I'm really keen to make sure that happens and, uh, and it's kind of my baby really, so I really liked it, I think it was everything that it wanted to be this year. Um, what are the ethics of the festival? Small is beautiful, I think that's where we're coming from and just kind of keeping it local and supporting um, emerging musicians and artists across this kind of region. We be, I mean, we accept that festivals aren't really, or nothing that humans do is particularly eco-friendly. But you know, all our, all our printing's done on recycled paper, and uh, and we do try and keep that to a minimum. What were the most difficult parts in the um, festival? Um, I think, I mean, probably the weather makes it, just makes everything a bit more difficult. And I lost my wellies on the Saturday because I, w I went into the green room and yeah. you need to take your shoes off because it's carpeted and there's cushions. And uh, so I took my wellies off and I think in the darkness somebody got confused and they accidentally took my wellies. So I had to borrow shoes from somebody else so I could get out and go get my shoes. So what would your top three tips be for organising such events? Uh, <laughs> don't do it. No. Um, <laughs> Um, really think it through in the first instance, just really think it through, talk to as many people as you can about their experiences if you know anybody who's done it, you know, just really find out what it's like because it's, it's much more than what, you know, initially what I imagined, it's far more, it's been a huge learning curve, the first year was a big learning curve, the second year was bigger and each year has, it's been a more steep learning curve. So Lucy, when's the next one? Well, it's going to be probably, if we do it next year, it's going to be on the sunniest weekend in the summer, I think. And do I get VIP? Of course, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what, I'll see you there then. Brilliant, see you there. Wow, that just goes to show how up and coming the music scene is in Leeds. Fine example of this is Andy, also known as Testament, who is here with me in the studio. So what inspired you to work in this particular field of work? A certain hip hop acts which really sort of sort of got me when I was a sort of teenager, like Della Soul, um, later on the Roots, a group called Freedom of Soul from California as well, very not really well known. So where does the inspiration come behind your lyrics? Well, from from life really. Um, I go by the name of Testament because of my faith and my Christian. And um, so my faith plays a big part in that. But just life, really. My my my. All, when I think about all my favourite music, or my favourite literature, my favourite even art, it's all about people just sharing their life with people. So, who have you collaborated with? Well, in terms of the record, I'm working on a record at the moment, and people on that are like some of my heroes. There's a rapper called J Life from New York. It's like one of my favourite, like intelligent, conscious rappers. Um, there's a jazz artist who won a MOBO, and there's a Mercury Music nominee called Sweat of Kinch. Ty is another Mercury Music Prize nominee, and another MOBO winners on it. And um, there's a singer called Corinne Betty Ray, who's like really famous and wins Grammys and stuff, and collaborates with all Steve Wonder and people like that. She's on the album as well. So how did it feel being the winner for the Urban Music Scheme in 2006? Um, it was cool. I was one of 20 winners. I wasn't like the only winner, but um, yeah, it was really cool and it was just nice. The big thing for me is like when you when you decide to do something creative to do in your life and to be a rapper or to do hip hop. And my parents were like, hmm, interesting, interesting choice there, Andy. But when the BBC like were like, oh, here's some money, we think you're good. We're going to give you loads. We're going to give you some free money and give you an award. Then your parents kind of go, oh, if the BBC think it's all right, then maybe our son isn't such such a weirdo after all. So how did you feel when the Blues and Soul magazine they commented um, on your music and they said um, that this 
sort of music is what the world needs more of, you know, from your up, your debut album. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was my uncle who wrote that, so... No, not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, Got no, me. that was really nice. That was really nice. I can re I've, I've been very blessed to have a lot of good reviews in magazines. OK, so be honest here. Do you think that anybody, absolutely anybody, can beat Box? Um, no. No. Yeah, I do, actually. Um, that's one of the things I teach human beatbox. It's one of the things that has helped sustain me as a musician is doing workshops and teaching. I've taught many people to beatbox, so in fact, you should beatbox. Ooh, I don't know. You should beatbox now. You I'll teach you to beatbox if you want. Okay, then you've got a performance later on, so you know, I'll show you what I'm made of. Is there a particular message that you'd like to spread across for young, um, aspiring artists? Yeah, which is just which is a bit of a hip hop cliche, but like, you know, they say keep it real. So don't, don't be talking about things or, it, just to be honest, whatever, whatever artist you are, whether you're a dancer or a poet or a rapper or all of those things, um, just keep it real really, just be, just be, tell people what's really going, what, what you really think, what's really going on, don't try and imitate all the time, you know, what people's doing, or rap, rap is like this, so therefore I must rap like that, or this is what's cool at the moment, therefore I've got to be like, this is what's cool. I think, to be honest, all my heroes and all the people and all the things that I've really enjoyed doing personally, to be honest, is stuff that I actually think, oh, this is actually part of my life, this is my experience, or this is my dream even, or this is my imagination, this is what, this is what makes me laugh. So, um, yeah, so keep it real, really. That's great, and I'll be looking forward to you teaching me some beatboxing later on in the show. In the meantime, here's the latest from the Gallery 37 across the city. The Visual Arts team with Gallery 37 have been on an intense four-week exploration around the subject of journey, and they have, start, and they have shared the experience through a series of images. The team have developed and used huge amounts of art techniques and have, and have in fact been, been on a creative journey on, on their own. Uh, the visual arts, arts course um, consists of loads of different bits of arty things. We've been doing photography, um, we've been doing printing, um, we've been playing games around the city um, with the theme of journeys. How's it coming along so far? Really good, yeah. We've got loads and loads of bits and pieces um, and there's loads of some really good artwork and I think everybody's really enjoying it and getting a lot out of it. MCs and rappers from all over the city have come from, have come together with Life, Life Force and Gallery 37 to en enhance their skills through creating beats, bass lines and vocal recordings. Yeah, my name is DSP, aka DS Productions. Uh, I've recently come onto the baseline scene, but I'm not really discovered yet. And I write these rhymes, it's easy. Might kick back, watch some TV, but I can't wait for the day that I'll be free 18. I'm in jail for the third time. Not a bad guy, but I've been through a tough time, rough times. I've done enough time to last a lifetime, jail time, mate, man. And that there, it's just, it's not about the experience. It's if you put, you know, it's got to put in the effort. Hey man, never getting me ducks in my bars, and my tracks in my flows, no ducks in my bars, the best of my flow conducts. I'm the best, never get mucky ducks uh, in heat. Well, I'm seeing it's more faster than rap. But uh, like MCing, it's like you talk like murking people and stuff like that, but rap's like talking about truth and stuff like yeah. that. Artists will be finishing the Gallery 37 showcase with a blazing performance of their own creations. 